And we're back from Amsterdam. This is uh, live. Uh, this is uh, um, ThingsCon 2017, and we're here with uh, uh, Jaromil. Welcome. Thank you. Um, you did a, a session today, I think? Yesterday. Uh, yesterday. So what was it about? Well, all uh, our crew was here uh, developing DAOs. DAOs is a software that uh, allows you to see the invisible, what happens on the network, which we often uh, think it's uh, just like under our control. But actually, you can imagine if something connects to your Wi-Fi at home, you don't realize uh, it immediately. You can go and look at the logs at the router. So we did this little software that visualizes it immediately. It gives you a map of the network that is on the local area. So it doesn't connect to the internet. Actually, we are really against stuff that connects to the internet. It does not connect to our servers. That would be spyware. It just gives you a, a vision on what happens where you are, in your office or in your home. And uh, we have uh, a surprise this year. We were doing this workshop also one year ago. And this year we managed to reach the 1.0 release after uh, a lot of uh, development. We were supported also by Sidon Fonts for uh, uh, bringing this to you know, this happy ending. And actually it's not an ending. We think we will continue developing it because it's very successful. Uh, uh, people actually understand it immediately. So the workshop was pretty successful under these conditions. Because um, Another way we explain it to people is um, it's, it's a switch. You can switch on and off your devices at home. And this, is, this should be normal. And people start realizing slowly, but like, yeah, why can't I do it? Like, it's just like your water, your gas, your electricity. You leave home for a while. You want to make sure that only a few devices are online, not all of them. And that maybe they connect only to a few places. So you want your fridge to connect perhaps to Amazon, if you like, but not, maybe not, or your PC to not connect to Adobe, because you don't need to have updates while you're not there. Uh, or, or to Microsoft or to Apple, all these big companies, they constantly establish this, uh, these information channels to them. They open contexts without us asking. And all what we want to have is control on this. We want people to be in control, uh, consumers if you want, but we call them participants, all of us that, you know, we buy things, we install software. We want to be in control of when it connects and when it doesn't. And, and, and does it run on your phone or is it a uh, It runs on a Raspberry Pi. Okay. So it's a normal box. We use ARM boards. It can also run on your own laptop, but it's useful if it's an object that stays at home nearby the router. Right. So then we are using a Raspberry Pi here. And, and where is it? Uh, how is it visualized? Is it visualized on a screen or? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, very visual. Yeah. So you, but you have to connect your uh, your computer to the, the the Raspberry. Yes, you can connect. You can go on the website. There is a, a small website which is local. No, only it's it's always dows.it. So yeah. dows it. You you just connect to it and you, on your local network. You will see it. If you are outside, you will not see it because it's only local. And you can also use it as a switch. Yeah, you can switch on. Uh, when you connect, you see immediately a list of devices. So the devices that uh, you have at home. And it says, this one I saw two minutes ago. This one five minutes ago. This one two weeks ago. And uh, they, they, you can give them a name. So first feature, very simple, but we can't do it. You can give a name to your device so that you can find it back on the network. You know, Android phones, for instance, you cannot change their name. The host name is always Android dash and numbers. So what is that? How can you remember which one is my phone, which one is the other? So you give it a name and you say on online. And you say this device can be the admin. So it can give other devices online. Uh, access or not or or and uh, there is a, a switch that we have we really love it it's called party mode it's like <laughs> it's right there it's like when you give a party you know you press it and everyone is online it's like mm -hmm. you know but it should be special mm -hmm. that everyone just goes online yeah. directly you know yeah like a party yeah, yeah like a yeah. party yeah so but um, um, uh, is, isn't it very hard to discover all the different devices but also can you operate them and really switch them on and off uh, well, we don't switch, we don't power them on and off. You, we switch them offline. Sorry. Right. Yeah, no, 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 but, but, is, but isn't that still very hard because you have to communicate with all these different kind of devices? Uh, no, we bypass the communication. We are on layer two and layer three. So we uh, give the DHCP and the DNS. So we give connectivity to oh. all the devices. So yeah. it becomes- It's the other way around. It's the other way around. You have to pass through DAOs. DAOs, you connect it to your router. 
Right, so it's, it's, it's in between, it's middleware. In between. Yeah. Yes, in between, and uh, this is also for us um, a legal uh, uh, concern because most of the routers, they are leased. The one that you get here from Access for All, from yeah. UPC, from Cisco, the Zigo, and yeah. these Cisco's, they are leased to, from the, the ISP, the internet service provider, so it's not yours. And um, the internet service provider accesses it to fix your internet. But that way they can see everything that is inside your home, which is really problematic from a privacy point of view. I mean, the general directive on privacy rights is coming up in Europe, and I think it's a really good thing that it comes because, you know, companies, something bad could happen in the company and some malevolent uh, break-in and then the break-in is also into your house. So DAOs isolates this, creates a sub-network, which is you own it, you own this sub-network. And it offers you an easy, a easy interface to, to interact with it. It's not a log. You know, if you go on a Cisco router, no? you, you come home after work, you're tired, and you want to know what happened to your network. You know, you think about it, and you start opening it. You log in with the username, and then you start looking at the logs of what happened. No one does this not even security experts. When they come home, they're tired. They don't open the logs of their home router, you know. No, but, and, and then again, I mean, I did look at the log, but I, I, I had no idea what I was looking at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because well, I, I had no idea. Yeah, it's all numbers. Yeah. And, yeah, no, we, we try to give a name. This was one of the first features. So you, you see this website, and it's just like the device. We do detection of the manufacturer. So DAOs tells you, this is an Intel, this is an Apple, this is a mobile, this is a Cisco, this is a, it, it recognizes what it is. And uh, it gives you the, the IP address and uh, it gives you the MAC address. And the IP address that was assigned. Yeah. And then puts it offline. You can put it online, offline, you can do tests. So you check, is this my phone? Online, offline, you know, and you see if it goes. When you understood what it is, you give it a name. Oh, that's really helpful. But then, but then uh, the, the other thing comes because you said, okay, uh, uh, when you're on a holiday, maybe you want to have less communication yeah. between. But now I'm a bit clumsy, so I uh, am already on holiday and now I forgot. But now you say our device is not connected, so no. I cannot access it from my holiday no. address, so I cannot change it afterward. No. no. At the present uh, stage, it's the same as with your water or gas or electricity. Yeah, if you so forget about it. Hopefully, you are friend with your neighbors friend enough that you actually have, you know, keys by some friend in the neighborhood and you phone and you say, can you please like do this for me? And that would be right. the same. So, and uh, this is, sounds like a device. You have the, the version uh, uh, 1.0. So is it, yeah. can, can I buy it? Uh, no, you can download it. It's gratis. Okay. It's, <laughs> okay. It's, uh, but then still I have to buy the Arduino. Yeah, on your own, yeah. not uh, from us. We okay. don't sell it, we don't have the capacity right now. Yeah. We plan a Kickstarter, we plan to pre-sell some special devices that we will do with much love. We are planning to not have only Raspberry Pis, uh, but more advanced hardware, and that is for the next phase. We wanted to make sure that the software works well first. Right. We are not really uh, a startup. We are a stick thing. We are a non-profit organization. So to us, the most important thing is that the software does what it needs to do. We don't care if there is a market or not. Uh, we just make the software, make it work, and make it free and open source. Sure, but you do care about people using it. Yes, yes. Yes, so... Yeah. It, and, and people uh, participating, because, you know, that's uh, how it's, it's also a workshop. We get a lot of feedback from people using it, and, uh, and it, sh it will grow through people actually trying it out before we go to a mass market. Our end dream, and if anyone can help me to do this, like, please do, is that this thing is at HEMA, you know, like for 50 euros, you know, just the price of production, because it's, it's important that people are able to, to really switch on and off. It's like, it's about privacy. I mean, not only EMA, Blocker, I prefer EMA actually, but you know, it's, it's, it feels more at home. You know? yeah. No, I agree, I agree, yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure whether Blocker will be around that long, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, 
no, no, I don't mind saying that. Yeah. But uh, um, now these days you also see uh, uh, devices in the house that actually use uh, uh, Tor, bra uh, Tor or, or other things just to cloak uh, and to, to, to anonymize your yeah. internet traffic, etc. Yeah. And they put a little device between yeah. your uh, uh, network and um, uh, and your router. Yeah. Is, is that something that you want to work together with or do you want to expand in that direction? Well, uh, we could also include, we do include Tor, so it can be optionally activated. But it's more of a, from a design perspective, we, we are very different because uh, from a functional perspective, we don't necessarily anonymize the traffic. We, we secure the DNS traffic, which protects you from the cheapest uh, spionage attacks, like monitoring your DNS, but we don't necessarily anonymize all the traffic. It's not our value proposition. You may want or may not want to anonymize your traffic. What is very important for us from a design perspective is that uh, we are not uh, acting on a situation of fear and crisis. So Tor is made for activists in crisis zones. And we also work with those. We really think it's very important what is being done with all these devices. But what we are looking at a different audience, a different uh, uh, participants. Participants that do not have this urgency are, are for DAOs. DAOs, for instance, doesn't use uh, any language that is connected to military um, activity. And this was a choice from the beginning, also for the name. You know, we could have called this thing firewall or shield or defensive, uh, you know, like uh, your shield, your home shields, your watchdog. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so, but you, yeah. you deliberately want to stay away from no, all we, this. No, we're this not going to call this war thing narrative. Doberman, no. you know, like <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just like, dude, uh, cut me some slack, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we it are. Has to be, it has, has a positive connotation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, also because it's for home. You come home, yeah. you don't want to think that hackers yeah. are going to inject malworms into your no. dish, you know, no. No. at dinner. So, no. so <laughs> there, there's a group of people already you reached and that are interested in this and yeah. they are participating, etc. Yeah. But the, the vast majority of the people are unaware, uh, have no idea what is going on. Uh, uh, so yeah. how do you reach these? Well, this is one way, not putting them in fear. Sure. Because a lot sure. of people is thrown mm -hmm. back, you know, when you tell them like, and you know, there are hackers behind the door. Yeah, and if yeah. you look at this, yeah. like, come on, like, you know, it's, it's with this approach and, uh, and with a website and with some campaigns, we don't do a lot of marketing. We are open to volunteers that help us like, mm -hmm. you know, actually communicate it better. But for now... Um, but still then, I mean, uh, yeah. as long as uh, there's, there's a lot of unaware, uh, an awareness amongst people. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people have no idea, and, and as long as they don't have any idea, they don't mind. Um, yeah. uh, and they will not search for your uh, software, and they will not download it, even though it's, it's for free. Uh, yeah. So how do you cr create this awareness um, uh, that there are so many things happening in your house you had no idea? I think the best thing that helps us to do this is the events that we are witnessing every year. Like only this year, there were um, some DOS attacks, denial of service attacks of things that, you know, are mm -hmm. uh, controlled by hackers and they become a botnet. So basically, you know, your, your toast, uh, your bread toaster yeah, can it's, be... It's, it's like, part of, a, of an attack. It's yeah, part yeah, of an yeah. attack, yeah. Uh, you know. Part like, of an army. <laughs> yeah, part of a Korean, North Korean yeah. army, like whatever, you know. So um, this, uh, these things happen, actually, because a lot of these devices are, are built in a sloppy way. Sure, but I, then you're selling fear again. You don't want to do that. You no, know, but this, this is where people come from. Uh, perhaps, you know, and a lot of people is looking at, at solutions because of these events. Uh, it's not the events that we, we don't really talk about these events. We had an article on The Correspondent by Tosmekis, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the journalist there, and he used another metaphor, which I'm not sure was really right. He said uh, a tampon for your internet. I'm not really sure if that's uh, no. no. No, but but there, there was an article. Stop the, the bleeding. I think that yeah. is that is what he meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, you, control, bit, you could control the bleeding. It was so, a bit yeah, embarrassing, yeah, yeah. but actually, made an idea. You can still look it up online. Mm. It's in Dutch. Uh, on the correspondent. So, uh, journalists uh, um, actually interact with us and, and started really producing something, some narrative on it. I think that our approach, again, because we are sticking, we don't want necessarily to, you know, we're not like marketing a product. We want people to um, interpret this object. You know, it's, in a way, it's, it's not just a technical object. Is, is it has a political function, it has a social function. So uh, who are we to actually tell everything that, that is associated with this, this object? 
So I think the best way we are doing it, make, making people aware is joining community events like TingsCon, uh, running workshops around. We are very available to run workshops. We just recently ran one at uh, um, uh, University, uh, Technical mm -hmm. University of Copenhagen, at the Center of uh, uh, Interactive Design uh, in Copenhagen. Sure, sure, but still, uh, it's not where my, where my parents go. No. No, but so, uh, still, uh, but they shop. For but, but they, <laughs> they, they, they shop at the Hema, but they don't go to your workshop. So yeah. how do you reach these people? But there's, there's, a, there's a large group of people that are unaware. Usually older people, but also young people have no idea what's yeah. going on. I think journalists will be the best. Yeah. Talking to journalists yeah. that are willing to tell the story. Right. So, and, and, and so far you're a, you're a Dutch uh, stichting. Uh, yeah. um, uh, Based in Amsterdam. Yeah, but is, this is an international product, obviously. Yeah. Uh, anyone can download it in, yeah. in, in the world. It's available in English as well, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So, so is, is, is there already traction in other countries? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Actually, Germany. Yeah. Germany, we went uh, to Dortmund, where we ran uh, two workshops with. Uh, uh, local uh, uh, one with local hackers, but one with the art and design institute, the HMKV, and uh, and in Copenhagen. So we are staying within Europe. We try to. Um, we don't want really. We don't have like world conquer dreams. We just like to interact with people that are close to us. And so far in Northern Europe, it's it's most of uh, the interest for it, and in schools and design uh, uh, schools. Especially because there is one particular reason for this, that DAOs has another feature. We put inside Node Red, and Node Red allows you to connect the messages that DAOs understands that what is happening in the network, the DNS messages. Uh, it, it allows you to connect them to a logic that uh, says, okay, if uh, this computer connects to Microsoft to download an update, send me an email and block it. If this uh, computer connects to Facebook, then uh, send me a Telegram message. If uh, this computer sends a tweet, switch on the Philips Hue light. You know, and this you can already do with DAOs. So now I made like pretty lame examples, but designers can come with something much better than this. So we are running workshops in which we tell people like, look, this is your building block. You put it in your home, and then you can build the logic. You can you can connect your LEDs. You can do things. <laughs> so that's your secret plan. Well, it's not so secret. <laughs> no, no, it's a secret <laughs> plan for world domination because you got some software that is uh, as a new platform for any whole IoT yeah, industry. Yeah, well, being open source, uh, you know, like yeah. it's uh, it's. Uh, we hope that people uh, support us in doing this, actually, right. but we don't want to conquer their no. network. It I'm doesn't actually, um, cause home. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really going to look into it and, uh, and I'm probably going to going to buy one. So. This year you had release 1.0. Uh, uh, maybe you will be back here next year. Uh, where will you be at? I think uh, it depends from the support that we find. Now we must look at uh, starting a Kickstarter and perhaps having some production. We need help from people that have expertise. We don't have expertise on producing an object, you know, and bringing it to market. So we are very open to this sort of uh, support. We are very open to institutions, organizations, individuals, groups of people that want to book a workshop, and that pays us also to go on. Like it's it's what really can pay also the work because. We are sticking, we are non-profit, but we pay people's work on, on these sort of things. We try to activate the development in this sense. And, uh, and if we get some more funding, otherwise it will go like slower. You know, but steadily because we can, we use it. You know, I use it at home. Like yeah. all developers, we use it. So we need it to work, and we need it. Uh, you know, and we have features and ideas. So we always eat our own dog food at time. All the software we do, we use it, which is very important. And um, and so I think that in the best case, we will have a 2.0 in one year because the sprint was uh, really good the last year. It went with good results, and we can actually now go much faster. The, the team is consolidated. We could even accept some more people in the team, some more students. We are open to stage, also programs for this. And so in the best case, if we find a funding uh, opportunity, uh, we could bring it to a 2.0 in one year. If not, I think we will be at a 1.5 with a lot of bug fixes in one, one uh, or two what would, be, what would be the main extra feature in 2.0 that is not in, in, in 1.0? Uh, there, there are many. There is one that I really would like to have is um, basically having a possibility to exchange the, um, uh, you know, uh, online there are all these hosts files. If yeah. you want to block your connection to certain, so you go to ETC hosts, 
and on forum you find it you don't need to go to one site there is not a market but people cut and paste these lists of ip is etc hosts and so i would really like and this i think i get it next year for sure because i need it i would like to have a, a place in daos where you can go to the thing and say uh, enable this etc host for this thing and you just paste something that you found online on a forum and so you create your own block list and then you can export it to exchange it with others so can you give me your uh, sure, your yeah. block list you know so and it's you don't need to go through your our website to do no. it you can just like cut and paste it on any forum yeah. so it's no nonsense hmm. that sounds like a good uh, a good feature yeah. Right. yeah well yeah. thanks very much thank uh, you i'm looking forward to the to the 2.0 as well and thank you uh, uh, so s s just sit there for, uh, for another bit um, so thank you for watching. This was another episode from the ThinksCon 2017 um, uh, conference. Uh, we will be back uh, with some new guests later on, so stay tuned.